Cool. Um, uh, well, Stefan played for Hot Corn. Thank you very much. Cool. I'm going to uh, uh, begin uh, just by asking, firstly, a review just about what a sort of gift this, this this character was. I mean, there's so many layers and so 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 many complexities to, to this role. I mean, it must have been such a, a great one for you to get your teeth stuck into. Yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was tough because the character is very similar to my own childhood that I had. Uh, so the job was mainly about going into it and reliving a lot of things that I had buried for a long time things I've been running from to try and embrace those things that was kind of the thing that we embarked on together was that we were going to do that and give it everything um, yeah I mean it, there's so many different battles that go on in Adam's head like it, to him ev it's, the, it's the him against the world when really it's the, the battle the main battle is it's him versus him do you know what I mean mm. and that was the most interesting part of it to me because I had lived that and I still I'm like, I, I mean I speak like I've got everything figured out now I'm a 22 year old kid with nothing figured out so I still go through that today do you know what I mean so that will always be an interesting thing that I can play with so yeah was it quite cathartic in some ways to, to I guess to so like, I, I think I thought it would be I thought that because to me everyone talks about how acting is this like yeah you do a hard scene it's therapeutic and blah 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 and I thought that would be true as well until I did those scenes, and I still felt maybe e even worse immediately after. I didn't come out of them being like, oh, tick, you mm. know, that's that part of my life over. I came out of it being like, oh, there's actually more stuff I need to address than I thought, which I guess is the same anyway, highlighting things that, rather than fixing them, because I always thought that acting, when people say acting is therapeutic, that it was, that you get healed by doing it, but I think more than anything, it just highlights things that need healing, which is just as beneficial, I think. I was at um, I went to Glastonbury last year and I saw a uh, boy better know, and I was thinking to myself, I feel like grime and kind of the sort of UK hip hop scene at the moment feels like the closest thing we've had to punk music mm. here. It felt like that when I was watching it. Mm -hmm. That kind of like releasing of kind of very quite pertinent and quite sort of, it can be quite sort of anger, I guess sometimes mm -hmm. it's, it's real emotions. Uh, what was it about this particular one that really appealed to you as a storyteller mm. to, to get involved in? Yeah, I think that's right. I think. Um, I've just been a big fan of, of rap and in particular UK rap and then rap battling, you know, for around 10 years. And, you know, what's happened with grime, the kind of DIY culture, the kind of, you know, a lot of the lyricism in grime is, is yeah, some of it is letting out anger, but a lot of it is very personal, very sensitive. You know, people like Shotty or Paige, you know, they, they talk about things that are deeply personal and, you know, I really respect that. and. You know, battling is just so creative and intelligent and funny and witty and humorous. And I just love the DIY nature of it and how they just get there, get it done. And it just felt like a world that I really wanted to kind of bring to a new audience. You know, a lot of people's reference is 8 Mile, you know, like this uh, on beat freestyled version of rap battle, whereas now in the UK and, you know, in Canada and US and around the world, battle is pre written and it's a cappella. And it just felt like a good world to explore. And how do you feel about the comparisons to, to 8 Mile? I mean, obviously, it's kind of hard not to make them because it's a film about a sort of a young man navigating his world around the kind of rap battling scene. Mm. Um, so do, 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 do you welcome those kind of comparisons? Or, or, do, or is it in some ways you feel like it's almost taking away the unique elements of one yeah. versus? No, I absolutely love the comparisons mm. to 8 Mile. I mean, you know, 8 Mile is a film that I really like. It's one of my favorite films. and. You know, if you look at Eight Mile, there's there's actually very little battling in it. There's a little bit at the start, a little bit at the end. Like it's just a solid drama with a like a fantastic performance from Eminem. And you know, with our structure of our film, we wanted to be a bit more of like Karate Kid. It was sports tournament structure. You know, fish out of water, learns his craft, goes through the ranks. You know, faces the big boss at the end. But no, I really welcome that Eight Mile comments. And obviously, you know the. British industry hasn't seen a rap battle film before, so it's always going to be unique. And uh, talking about Fish Out of Water, did you, how did you feel about the, the, the rapping side of things? Because, I mean, were you, had you done much of that before? Or, or was, this, was this like a new craft you had to kind of learn? Yeah, I'd done nothing no. before this <laughs> at all. Um, if I, I'm trying to think truthfully, how, re how did I really feel about doing it before? You know, I don't think I had, I didn't have time to think about it actually, because I got this job. And then I got a job, there was like a couple of months before we started shooting and I got another job in between that time. So my focus was pulled off to that. I think had I not have got that job, I would have been more anxious and have more insecurities and more anxieties in general. 
but because I just didn't have time to think about it, I just had to like pull it out. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. say that all the time. Like I just had to. I just had. There was no choice on the day but to just try and smash it as best you could. I don't. I didn't want to be humiliated as well. And I knew that you were worried, and I didn't want to let you down. Ah, no, I wasn't worried. I mean, you prepared really well, and like it was amazing to see how quickly Connor picked up the the lyrics in particular. Like they're very intricate lyrics. He learned them very quickly. He was able to perform them really well. You know, we didn't make it easy for him. We did like three and a half minute single take on his you know, first battle versus Blaze, but he has to get it right for three minutes. There's no cutting. So I was just impressed by how he quickly picked it up. Yeah, because he starts to perceive the world through lyrics. I mean, there's that scene in the cafe when he's rapping about Terry's predicament. So he's obviously using mm. his new craft to sort of... So it's his expressionism, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I was just wondering if, if you found that you started doing that slightly, because I said, obviously, before we started, that I started doing that after. Sort of, but did you find, because the character was constantly kind of making, uh, turning everything almost into rhyming couplets, did you find that in real life you started kind of... I did, yeah, I did. Do you remember, I, there was a few times I was freestyling and I said, I got this one. I got this one. I'm going to, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take the, take the helm. Yeah, the scene in the bedroom when you're learning to rap with Michaela, you, you, we had some pre-written stuff that was kind of shown as improvised freestyle stuff, but then Connor came with his own lyrics, which unfortunately didn't make the cut. Not because they weren't good enough, but they were just quite extreme. So, yeah, we left them on the cutting room floor. And because uh, I was going to say, I mean, there is a great message in here, though, isn't there? Because, I mean, it's not uh, taking sort of particularly uh, young people's anger and channeling it for, and, and their complexities through and emotions through uh, creativity, isn't it? I mean, really, I, I, that's the main sort of thing I took away from this movie, is taking young people with, with issues and letting them, I don't know, uh, explore those through a creative sort of medium, I suppose. Yeah, I think that battle rap embodies that, you know, being a, as an outlet for your emotions, you know, for your anger, for your creativity. And, yeah, if that's coming through in the film, that's, that's really perfect for us. So what's, who's your favourite rapper of all time? All time? I'm going to say shotty horror. Same because he's in the other room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shotty horror. And he's listening. Like, he'll be listening. Yeah. He will definitely be listening. Shotty horror. And this, this might be a sort of tough one just to put you on the spot. Have you got a favourite lyric? From the film? The from Just from hip-hop, rap in general. Any that stand out? Oh, I've got, it's got to be a good one. <laughs> oh, so, why hasn't no one asked that question already? Have you got one? I've got a favourite lyric from the film. Like I can't, I can't go too wide, but I've, yeah, when Slaughter is like, I've got magic hands, bro. I'm so yeah, Merlin. Yeah, that, that lyric good. that you see on the trailers is just yeah, yeah. really great for me. So who, just quickly, who wrote all the the lyrics for, for your character in particular? That who was who was behind that? Yeah, so the lyrics were right by a te team of writers yeah, yeah. who are like the the top writers in the UK rap right battle. And Rowan, Tony D, Gemini, and Shuffle. We created a little writers room who wrote all. Adam's lyrics, and then Shotty wrote his own lyrics, and Paige wrote her own lyrics. And, and just finally, uh, Connor, I was going to ask. I mean, just uh, obviously, uh, much of this is about p giving people a sort of second chance in life, and sort of people putting their faith in, in people. For, for you, from a career point of view, how important is it that someone gives you this chance? So I mean, you've got obviously the lead role in such a great sort of British movie here, and I think sometimes great actors and people with great talents can go unnoticed forever unless mm. they're just given that someone takes that leap of faith in them you must be so thankful that you've had that now and obviously this hopefully will now spawn the, the start of a career in cinema yeah I think I'm more thankful for like I mean that yeah abs undoubtedly but I'm more thankful for like the friendship that I've got out of it do you know what I mean with you and stuff like we went through so much on that film do you know what I mean it was tough mm. There was we had to deal with some tough subject matters and some mm -hmm. tough days um it's both really personal for yeah, both of us absolutely. in similar ways. So we were just able to bond over that and just... Like this film for me, my mother passed away from bowel cancer when I was a kid. So I knew what it was like to grow up without a maternal figure. And this film for me was the closest I'm ever going to get to saying all these things to my mum that I ever wanted to say or to even seeing her again. And that's what it was to me. So I think if there's anything that I'll take away from it is that, do you know what I mean? Mm. Thanks so much for your time, guys. Much appreciated. No thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Cool. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you. Love this.